Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Well, it's good, really good to be with you today. We're in chapter 19 for Samuel, and uh, we're going to start in verse 20. Actually, we're going to start and end in verse 20. So we've got one verse today. Good to be in God's Word with you. So thankful for the Scripture. You know, David's on the run, and Saul is after him. And as you read the preceding verses, what you discover is, um, you know, Saul's wife, Michael, the daughter, sorry, David's wife, Michael, the daughter of Saul, has, has um, you know, she knows that her dad's after her husband. And so she's played the part and she's given him space to, to make a run for it. David now is on the run and Saul is pursuing him with a vengeance because Saul thinks the only way to solve my problem is to get rid of the problem and the problem is David. Saul's projecting, Saul is deflecting, he's deflecting personal responsibility. Um, It is so much easier in life to make an innocent person the enemy than to identify issues that we need to own ourselves. Like that is just, you know, classic blame shifting, um, classic unwillingness to take ownership. Far easier for us to make an enemy out of somebody around us than to really do the hard work of um, taking responsibility for the problems that exist in our own lives. Um, This is just a side note, but Sometimes that's complex, right? Because sometimes, sometimes there's mutual ownership when there's a problem, especially in a relationship. Sometimes it's not just one person's fault. You know, uh, when we do marriage counseling, like that typically is the case, right? It, it normally isn't all just about one spouse who's failed. Sometimes that is the case. But more often than not, you know, there's culpability on both on both parts, in both parties. And so, you know, how do you sort that out? Because when there's conflict in a relationship and really, you know, the responsibility lies at both parties' feet, sometimes it's just so much easier to focus on what the other person needs to change instead of dealing with what needs to change in your own life. And I've just found that, um, and this is a lifelong thing, right? Because, um, there are times in my own life where I'm like, yeah, it's just easier for me to blame somebody else than, than to look inward by God's Spirit and sort out my own stuff. Um, but it is so much better, you know, in a when you're struggling in a relationship um, and there is mutual failure, just to, to be able to be in a place where it's like, hey, you take responsibility for yours. I'll take responsibility for mine. We'll come in um, mutual repentance and lay that out as the groundwork. Because when that happens, the defenses go down. You don't have to defend yourself or be on guard or attack the other person because now it's the the context and the framework of humility. And when, when, when that is the framework that you're working through, um, that you're dealing with conflict resolution through, now it opens the door for you to say to somebody, okay, you know, um, well, what is it that you see in my life? Now that I know that we're both taking responsibility for our, for our own issues, I want to invite you in and, you know, we've, we're rebuilding trust. And so tell me what you, what you see in my life that needs to be, that needs to be addressed. Obviously that's not the case in Saul's life. And by the way, that wasn't even the point of today's devotion but it is related. Verse 20 says, Then Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as head over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And let me tell you how this is connected with what I've said. At the end of the day, in relationships, it's not just about you trusting the other person, it's about you trusting God. You know, if you in your relationships don't first and foremost trust the Lord, you're never going to be able to trust people. There will always be that desire 
to, to build up the boundaries, to protect yourself, to um, look out for number one, to not really be able to receive what people say because you're always going to be questioning their motives and their agenda. I'm not suggesting to you today that you shouldn't be discerning, but when you trust God, you know, when you're trusting God first, when you're putting yourself in the hands of the Lord, well, when you remember that he's your protector, which is exactly what happened here with David, Saul's going after David and, you know, the servants of Saul, like they, they, they run into the prophets and all, and all of a sudden what they discover is that there's a company of prophets prophesying over Samuel and over David and the spirit of God comes on all the messengers of Saul. And this happens multiple times to the point where Saul goes out himself and he experiences the same thing, almost as if God is saying to Saul again, hey, I'm the one who's protecting David. You know, you're going to send out your servants, you're going to come against David, but the truth is this, he has divine favor and protection that comes from me. Um, and while that was certainly a unique situation for David as the anointed of God and the coming king of Israel, you know, God protects you too. You don't have to live in fear in your relationships. Um, you don't have to be in a place where you just, you, you make it a rule in life not to trust anybody. If you're that person who doesn't trust anybody, at the end of the day, you probably don't trust God. Um, and you may be really bad at picking who should be close to you in a relationship. So I want to encourage you today, maybe in that, the midst of um, dealing with conflict in relationships, Number one, humble yourself and take responsibility for what you need to own. Number two, entrust yourself to God and know that He's your protector. And number three, let that build good, solid, strong, trusting relationships with those who are in your inner circle. Father, thank you so much. Help us today to trust in you, God, and to know that you're our protector. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.